What's up guys, Joe here. Welcome back to my channel and today we are back with Uno X. More exciting World Tour races coming up today. If you missed the last one, make sure you go back and watch the Ronda von Vlaanderen in that episode. We're on to episode 18 today. And of course, make sure you drop a like down below. Let me know what you think of the episode in the comments as well. Because today we do have the Zulia Basque Country Tour. Really fun six day race in Spain in the Basque Country of course. Shelter Priest as well is coming up but Zulia will be the bulk of today's episode we have some flat stages but also some really really difficult hilly stages and again we did achieve a top five a few episodes ago in Catalonia can we maybe do that again here because looking at our lineup you can see our team right here we are going to try and give some more opportunities to the likes of Peter Mogensen and Torsten Train we've had the Johannessons on form here Mogensen is our new gen signing of course could be our Grand Tour rider or one of them of the future. So we're going to test them out here in Itzelia alongside Train, of course. There's no time trial, so perhaps suits Train a little more. You can see the other riders we have too. Sora and Wernish Gold, probably our sprinter. And first stage, Wernish Gold is on the favourites list, quite high up as well. We have the likes of Mohoric, Ida Schelling and Paddy Bevan here too. And for those of you who don't know, I have been away on holiday. I'm now back, of course. Uh, so it's been a little while, essentially, since I last played PCM. So expect very rusty playing today not expecting many wins at all but I think the race days if they are like this throughout the episode we can definitely try and maybe get a victory captain price one of the riders on a plus five for us let's get him in the breakaway and there we go captain price the big captain price the new european under 23 time trial champion in real life of course he is in today's breakaway two riders not particularly strong are here we do have four minutes and quickly as well let's take a look at the start list i can already see alaphilippe almeida and remco all for quick step absurd team right there we have landa and lopez still can't believe those two signings for the ineos grenadiers roglic has to be the favorite though nonetheless Emmerich Mass is here as well Mike Woods Godou it is a superb start list for this race again we have Juan Ayuso here probably a rider to watch like he was in Catalonia I mentioned him there as well and despite the plus five day Captain Price cannot even compete for the KOM or really the sprint jersey we're not going to take either of these we're purely here to try and pull off a miracle and win the stage from the breakaway and sadly it won't be Captain Price's day but hopefully it will be Soren Wernschgold's I think we have a great chance, particularly with Ida Anderson, another rider for us on a plus five day. Look at this guy for a lead out man. Here we go then, four kids go to the finish. Nicholas Larson slowly upping the tempo. Wernish Gold is struggling at that rhythm though. Let's drop it very, very slightly towards the line. We have two kids go. Ida Anderson, your job begins right now, my man. Let's go. Can we lead out Wernish Gold to victory today? Under the Flamme Rouge is a big lead out. Are we going to have enough energy left? For the sprint with Wernish Gold, here we go. Cyril Barth is coming, but Surin Wernish Gold wins the first stage of the Zulia Basque Country Tour for by far the biggest win of his career. There we go. We get a World Tour victory here in Spain. Certainly not the best sprinting field by any stretch of the imagination. We've beaten Cyril Bartz and Vincenzo Albanese, but still, Soren Wernschgold, what a victory. And so, can we make it two out of two? And today, we will be trying to do that in the leader's jersey. And sadly, today, we don't quite get a repeat of those absurdly good race day conditions, but we do get two jerseys for the team. You love to see it. So, it has been a long day controlling things on the front so far, and I tell you what our guys are feeling the effort so far today the breakaway are about to be caught it's not going to be their day but I'm pretty sure we'll have quite a lot of riders drop by the end of today's stage luckily for us though the pace has slowed a little bit now the breakaway have been caught so Rowan Schgold despite not having too much yellow should be able I hope to sprint for this one here we go then, 4k to go. Now the battle is on for the front of the peloton and we are losing that battle so far with Captain Price. We've been blocked in absolutely terribly. It's not the great lead out we had on the first stage of the race and Wernish Gold is absolutely nowhere. We're going to have to go early and Soren Wernish Gold, I'm afraid, is not going to back up his victory from the first stage by any stretch of the imagination. Instead, Julian Alaphilippe does win stage two ahead of Paddy Bevan and that could be crucial in terms of bonus seconds. So we lose the stage we were absolutely nowhere in uh, competing for victory and sadly we also lose the overall lead of the race although Ronish Gold of course not really a genuine contender 
And after that sprinty start, we are going to take on the Sprinters Classic in Shell de Priest. Wout van Aert is here, Steuben, Seneschal, Sagan, lots of big names. Sam Bennett as well, he's probably my favourite for the day for us. We're going to be sprinting, hopefully, with Chris Halvorsen. Away we go then, looking good with the sponsor boards on show. Halvorsen gets a plus two, would have loved one of those plus fives on Chris Halvorsen. I think this is one of his objectives as well. So we are now on the finishing circuit. This is where we need to be very aware. I mean, big riders are here. Van Der Poel, Wout van Aert, Peter Sack, and all the big names are at Sheldon Priest this year. Still the early breakaway up the road, but only a minute for them. So we're now down to 15k to go, and I need to make the decision. Do I try some attacks at this stage? 54 riders are all that are left at the front of the race, or do I maybe try and just settle for a sprint with Hal Vorst and then take on the likes of Van Aert and world champion uh, Sam Bennett. I'm not sure it's the right decision. So as Connor Swift seems to be attacking, maybe Jimmy Hansen can try and follow. He sits up again and into the final 10k. It's going to be very, very difficult to create any major gaps at this stage of the race, but Stoyman and Swift might be doing it. And so entering the final 7k, it's probably too late for attacks at this stage. We have uh, used Johansson and all our other riders as lead out riders. We have 31 riders at the front of the race. That is all. GVA, he is gone. Oh, here we go, 5K to go. Russell is on the front. Blickra not really feeling it despite the plus five day. That's why he's ahead of Marcus Aldegaard in the lead out. But here comes Sam Bennett. Here comes Sam Bennett. Can I grab his wheel? Doesn't seem so. And Russell is done. Let's go into the final three kilometers. There is Vanderpool to our left. Blickra, he can go. Marcus Aldegaard, he can go. As well into the final two kilometers but look at the lead out by Florian Seneschal for Sam Bennett today and surely Sam Bennett is going to defeat Vanderpool no he isn't Matthew Vanderpool is going to win Shelter Priest ahead of Bennett then we have Van Aert how Vorsen is fighting for a top five place and we just about take that that was an absurdly good lead out by Florian Seneschal, but it wasn't rewarded by a win by the world champion Sam Bennett. Matthew Van Der Poel was a victory considering his sprint stat. And it was only a half start objective, but we do get that one secured just about with that result with Chris Halvorsen. But now swinging back over to the Basque Country, we have an absurd stage today. This has the potential to be uber selective, I'm sure. Plenty of short, medium length hills and Primoz, no doubt, is the favourite. And I can actually tell you that Peter Mogensen did hit his fitness peak as of this stage. Sadly, it's only a plus two. I'm not sure we're going to be able to stay with the best of them. I'm not sure what our best tactic is, but I am sure I do want to get someone at least in the breakaway. Tell you what though, it's been one hell of a fight to try and get in today's breakaway. And I'm not sure I'm going to ultimately be able to get there. Oh, look at that. Look at that. We have three riders from the breakaway. Nicholas Larson, I thought, was about to get there, but uh, we are 20 seconds behind the others, and we are completely done. What a shame. And that literally means we're going to have to drop all the way back to the peloton, and we won't be in today's breakaway. And so, the climbing does begin. We have the likes of Cataneo, Carl Frederick Hagen on the front, maybe a potential future rider for our team as well. And Soren Rangel can't even hold the rhythm in the peloton. This is absurd already. So we're halfway up the second climb of the day. It is the most difficult first category climb. And look at our team. We are getting absolutely decimated already as the breakaway already caught. And Israel continue to press on on the front. And over the top there, Mogensen and Train are our only two riders left in a peloton of 108 riders. Captain Bryce clinging on to the back. And we have four riders already gone for the day. I think as well Mogensen is going to be our leader based on his current energy compared to Torsten Train. And I will actually roll across the line here, pick up some KOM points. Maybe that can be a secondary goal if uh, our GC falters. Okay, Eric Fetter on the attack for Yolo Kamesa. I'm going to change that. So we'll try and keep Train and Mogensen both to the front. Let's keep them both on maintain. It does mean no one of our rider is being protected. So uh, a difficult situation for us. We also need some water, but I can't really go back at any point. Okay, 17k to go. The final climb is now here. Sadly, Peter Mogensen was the rider who had to go back and get water. He's taken the energy hit compared to Train, as you can tell. So really, very indecisive of me choosing a leader so far today. Let's try and get somewhere to the front. But like I said, 
going to be so difficult at the front of proceedings. Mike Woods is trying something. Pronsky is here. Ala Philippe is on the limit as well. Literally everyone is on the limit, such as the high level, I guess, of the race bar. Primoz Roglic, he looks very, very calm, but no attack from him, at least so far today. However, as I say, as I say, it, Simon Yates is on the attack. Roglic trying to follow. Letsenko is there as well. Mogensen, what a job he is doing, bringing train and himself right to the front of this race. That is perfect. I cannot really really follow those guys at the very front but let's try and sit in the wheels and maybe catch them towards the end I think we are just about bridging back to them here we go we have 7k to go 72 riders still here hasn't been anywhere near as selective as I expected so far today and train is going to be the man attempting to sprint for us so this has been a bit of an epic stage to be fair we've done very very well so far to stay in this position if you ask me I think we're going to go for a fairly typical lead out here but David Godzu is on the attack there is Primoz Roglic opening things up as well. Mogensen trying to set up train as best he can into the final kilometer under the Flamme Rouge. It's surely not going to be a victory. Here goes Valverde. Here goes Roglic. Train is blocked in a little bit, but it is going to just about be Alaphilippe ahead of Mate Mohoric. We get a very nice top five on a day which could have been much worse. So it's a very respectable result for Train sprinting it past Valverde in the end, but mainly we do just about stay in contention overall, which Alaphilippe is now leading by 15 seconds. Another day with potential GC implications heading into Bilbao, I think probably the biggest city in the Basque country. Okay, so hopefully today we will be allowed in the breakaway. I have tried with Nicholas Larson. I think he suits this stage quite well. Uh, hopefully he can act as a satellite rider if he's not going to go on and win the stage train again on a very good day. And finally, I was able to join a breakaway Larson here with Lillian Kalmajan and Tom Sheens, two real breakaway specialists. I don't believe it. I actually do not believe what I've just witnessed. We were approaching the intermediate sprints and Nicholas Larson has punctured, putting him a minute behind the rest of the breakaway. Are you serious? Luckily, we just make it back on before cracking completely. Oh, but that is so frustrating. And Mikel Landa has fallen, actually, alongside Clement Champisan, Marco Brenner, Flores is behind as well. It's all kicking off. But now we swing towards the Puerto de Salub. It's going to be quite decisive, potentially, in today's stage. We'll see how it's ridden. Three climbs I can see on the profile all of which are very steep and are going to have massive implications today. Oh my word, another really unlucky moment for us. Alejandro Valverde falls alongside Peter Mogensen and that is going to spell the end of Bala's race. Oh no, into his 40s now. Could that be the end we see of Bala? And I think it's going to definitely be the end we see of Peter Mogensen competing in the GC here. Train, it is down to you. And the treacherous course means more falls. Kreuzweig, Balka Molema goes down as well as Patrick Conrad. We're going to just cruise in, I've decided, I think, with Peter Mogensen, uh, just so we can lose time and maybe go in the breakaways. And now the Alto del Vivero has begun. And look at how steep this is. Roglic is to our left. Anderson, he is done for the day. We need to set a rhythm and try and sustain it. And to be fair, I think we've done a fairly good job of it. But Esteban Chavez and David Godou are on the attack. Masnada, Silbart, they're trying to do some work. We're right to the front of the race as well. And let's see the peloton. And it is going to be, I think, the most selective day of the Itzulia Basque Country Tour so far. I'm not really strong enough with Torsten Train, I didn't believe, to try anything substantial in terms of trying any attacks. So we're going to have to pick up some points, sit in the group, and just hopefully be carried to the line. And so we are down to about 50 at the front of the race. I've tried to take Alaphilippe's wheel, but you can see I've been pushed completely off it. Let's try a move to Roglic instead, but uh, it's proving... Very difficult right now. Maybe Matej Mohoric will be better, but Esteban Chavez is on the attack. Remco Evenepoel is trying to follow as well. I am sat on Alaphilippe's wheel yet again, but probably not the best wheel to have considering Remco is up the road. Can we move up at all in this group? Serrano is here. So is Marc Soler. No idea what we're doing. I think Remco is going to be caught. We're just going to sprint for the line. Godou past Chavez and David Godou is going to win in Bilbao pretty comfortably, to be fair. Again, pretty good sprint by us, but nowhere near winning this stage. 
Really, I can feel the class at this race. So many good riders, but Godu's win does put him second in the GC. We now have Train as our leading option. Still plenty of riders in contention within about 21 seconds of the race lead, but it is going to be potentially a breakaway stage hunt with Peter Mogensen from now on. And next up, potentially the queen stage of the race, the Arate climb. This is a very difficult one, trust me. This, I believe, concluded stage one of La Vuelta in 2020. There are about five riders left. Roglic won the stage, and it's hopefully going to be as exciting here. So I did manage to get in the breakaway with Peter Mogensen, plus one day for the man, but we have Ben Tullet, Sergio, and now Rafael Mica and Bauka Molema in the group. Balka Mulma is only four minutes down and actually and now and uh, Tullet are right there in the GC only 21 and 18 seconds down so really don't see us being given any chance. But sadly the breakaway just uh, it wasn't working for Mogensen. We are now back in the main peloton and only Ben Tullet remains up the road. But sadly guys I think on the zero race day this one is just going to be a step too far for the team. We're not quite up to competing with these guys at the moment. Moment. And you can see it right now. Trainer, only rider left, and he has dropped from the front of the race as Pernsteiner, a lovely little block. And I did try to make the bridge, as you can see, but one minute, yeah, it's not happening. We are out of the GC at the Azulia Basque Country Tour. And as we see the, the main peloton tackle at the Arate climb, this is a moment to remember in years to come where we're not able to fight with the World Tour teams and hopefully we can uh, maybe return to this race in future episodes and really see the progress we have made. Because conquering the Azulia Basque Country Tour is France, but it is David Godou, not Julian Alaphilippe winning today. What a victory for the FDJ man. He is going to take the lead of the race, probably win the race as well. Simon Yates will be second. Roglic sprints only for third place today. You can see the rest of the guys in the top 10. And it's a big no from Alaphilippe. He loses over four minutes on the stage. Such a shame. Maybe I should have foreseen it and dropped out of the GC earlier so we could have gone for the KOM rather than trying to cling on and not being ultimately strong enough. We're only 31st place with Train over seven minutes down overall. Ah, uh, it's, it's gone downhill since we won the first stage, let's be real. And so let's see if we can maybe, just maybe do something in the time trial around Ibar to finish up. We're not on the favourite screen, but we do have some riders here who are capable of time trial this. Mogensen, of course, I think his first time trial with the team. Captain Price as well as Werenschgold. And we do have the apparent advantage of going early on here, but Captain Price and Werenschgold, I fear this first climb is really going to put pay to their chances today. Unfortunately, like Captain Price, I've died just to the line with Nicholas Larson. We do take the new best time, but again, it's not going to hold. So come on, Peter, put us out of our misery. Your first time trial with the team. Team. He definitely is our best suited rider to this course. Can we take the provisional best time? We've really pushed it to the first split with Mogensen. Only nine seconds down on, I think it is Seb Berwick, uh, who is first over that first split. And have we continued our good run? Let's see with Mogensen at the second split. We are provisionally the best rider at that split. Only by one second though. And now into the final kilometre. This TT has been much better managed by myself. Peter Mogensen catching Repero to the line. Free Repero of Mogensen. Here comes Mogensen. We're not quite going to use all the red, but we do take the best time so far. That's a win in itself. And quickly, I think we're going to be put... Uh, into misery by Raphael Micah. No, one second down. I'm intrigued to see how Ganna gets on today. He loses time at the first split, but surely he can make that up later on. Let's see. Here comes Ganna to the line. Has he overturned the deficit? You bet he has. What a time. And Train is going to conclude a fairly miserable Itzulia Bass Country Tour for the team. 1 minute 54 down. So Remco somehow 32 seconds down at the first split. He's fighting for a top 10. Shocking day for Remco apparently in the TT here. Let's see how this race ends. Can Godou with his terrible time trial hold on to the lead of the race or can Primoz or someone else hunt him down? So Tom Dumoulin, ninth place provisionally, and he does take the best time from Pippo Ganna. You love to see it from Big Tom. So I think Tom Dumoulin is going to win the TT unless Primoz Roglic can deny him. He needs to make up over a minute to win the race. He wins the time trial, it seems, 14 seconds clear. But Simon Yates is actually first at the first two checkpoints. 
Boy, oh boy, is he surely not going to beat Primoz Roglic. This could be close, though. And Yates loses the TT, but he does defeat Roglic in the GC. Now, let's see the gap to Godou, I think. Uh, Godou needs to stay within, I think, 44 seconds of Yates. Let's see if he can hold on to win the Zulia Basque Country Tour. No, he cannot. Simon Yates is going to steal victory. Pretty fun climax to the race. You have to be honest. Roglic takes the win. Not enough to win overall. Simon Yates is the man to win in the Basque Country here. Just a shame we couldn't really be a part of the race towards its finale. Nonetheless, a stage win. Let's remember it. It's a pretty good result, I guess, over a six-stage stage race at World Tour level. So I must apologise, guys. We weren't quite as competitive as I hoped in the Itzulia Basque Country Tour. We got the stage win in the sprint with Range Gold. After that, we fell away quite quickly. Nonetheless, though, we do hold fourth place in the super prestige standings. Look how far ahead, though, Quickstep and Jumbo Visma are already in the individual standings as well. Uh, we still have Magnus Court in the top 10. And hopefully you guys enjoyed today. Hit like and subscribe if you did. We have Paris-Roubaix coming up in the next episode. I will see you guys in that one.